Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. In this episode, we're going to be diving in to all sorts of fun Black Panther spoilers this week. This is episode 538. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Leadership. Roll a six, make a move extreme. Token up. Take an action from your team. I go straight to your start. Hypersonic speed. Roll a five. Getting brave, hitting blades, cross fangs. Hey yo. Stick and move, click a few just to hit a stop. Need a three CCE on a flurry close. Tear your dials apart. Once the timer starts. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And you can go to shop.wizkids.com, use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order there, not valid on certain pre orders and promos. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going yo, on? Yo, 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 what's up? Whoa. How we doing? There it is. I'm good. How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm doing great. Phenomenal, man. It's another night for Hero Clicks, baby. Can you ask for anything more? We've got a new set to talk about. Not the full set list tonight, but some standout highlight pieces, some things that we're both excited for. And yeah, yeah I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, do you want to do uh, what made you happy this week? Yeah, oh yeah. So I drove back home this week, went to a party for my friend who is leaving to China. It, you know, it's a little bittersweet. It's like, I'm not going to see you for probably like a year like he bought a ticket, and I found out didn't buy a ticket home. Wow. He's just going. Oh, so wow, that's the kind of guy he is. You know, he's got to do it. I'm a little sad, but it is what it is. Uh, got some new clothes again, some costume pieces, which we'll talk about a little bit going into the weekend here. And then, yeah, also exciting. I bought a new razor, which I have <laughs> been meaning to do for a hot minute. And so, yeah, I'm, like, excited to shave later. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, on top of that, putting together the costume pieces and the full look of... Do we spoil it now? I think we spoil it now. We do, yeah. Wario and Waluigi. You can guess who's who. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like if they, if they guess the other way, it's just kind of wrong. No, it's, it's, like, it's not like, not right. obvious at all. Yeah. No, no, it could be either one. It could be Wario <laughs> or Waluigi. It could be... There's no defining features about no. either of those characters Mm-mm. that would better suit you or me. Yeah, they're, as far as I'm concerned, basically <laughs> like gray. There's no black and white here. Oh, my God. But yeah, that's been really exciting. So this convention we're going to, NebraskaCon, I found out that there's like a fair amount of people I work with that are also going to oh, this. Oh, nice. And so I'm excited to just kind of see what this is. I'm purposefully like leaving myself in the dark. I'm ready to just see what happens. I'm ready to be Waluigi. I'm ready to party a little bit, wah, wah, style. Wah. And yeah, so I think a lot of this week is like looking forward to that rather than, you know, the stuff this week. It's been a little mundane. Yeah. It's been, you know, go home, help the parents out. Something that sucked this weekend just was oh. really rough. Watching the neighbor's dog at my parents' house, and it licked my face. And I was just playing around with it. Didn't think anything of it. Like 10, 20 minutes later, my eye was like swelling up. Oh, it's my yeah, whole face turned red. That was so bad. My neck was just like solid red, and it was like twenty minutes before I'm about to leave too. So I was just sitting at home, like, hey, uh, I don't want people thinking I have the plague, so I'm just gonna hang out a bit. And, of course, my mom's just freaking out. She's like, well, it's probably not going to go away. Oh, my God. Oh, She's like, okay, Mom, calm down. I'll be I'll be okay. So I just sat in the basement for, like, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour, just Dang, chilling. Chilling. Waiting for it to, like, Swelling subside. And, go down. and it did. So I haven't been in a house with pets in a while. I love pets. I love cats, dogs, everything. And I know at some point in my life I'm going to get one or both of those. But, man... It's gonna take some serious acclimation. Yeah, dude, no so, kidding. But I can't. I, I have to. I have to have a cat at some point. And when I really like to torture myself, I go on the Humane Society page and I look Scroll at cats. The cats. I showed you that one yesterday. Batman is pretty cool. Yeah, a cat yeah. named Batman. <laughs> that rocked. Master Bruce. I like the other Meow. one though. I like the half orange, half black one. He's oh yeah, cool. Two Face. Yeah, Two Face. Yeah, Harvey Dent. Another great Harvey. Great cat name. That is a good cat name actually. Harvey. Yeah. We'll let the cat decide. 
see if he likes and it. You flip the cap, but it always lands upright. So you always get the result you want. <laughs> Two Face has a new meaning, baby. That's anyway, so funny. <laughs> that's uh, that's my week. It's been it's been pretty good. And yeah, I mean, new Hero Clicks previews all week. Just refresh, refresh, it refresh, refresh, refresh. Yeah. You're the you know, you could say you could say addict, but I like to say passionate. Oh yeah. <laughs> How about you, Calder? I just What's like new? seeing all the new stuff. Yeah, you know, my week was fantastic. I finally sat down and watched this this movie called The Corpse Bride. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah. Before, the uh, sorry, the, don't don't Tim, say it. Don't say it. Tim Burton. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, had never watched it before, and I was like, I need to just watch this movie. It just missed me in my childhood somewhere, I guess. And I was like, oh, very much a fun movie. I wear a shirt of this in middle school, yes. and that's my personality yes. kind of movie. Yeah. But a good movie nonetheless. Once, once I saw it, I was like, that explains. All of the girls that I knew that liked this movie, this makes so much sense mm-hmm. now. I, you know what? I get it. Tim but Burton's an identity, movie. not a movie. Kind of is. Or a director, know, a I should bit. say. Kind of is an identity for some people. The, yeah. Their vibe is just Tim Burton, very much. <laughs> very much so. But no, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. You know, I had a good time. And then, you know, I played Hero Clicks on set. I got to bust out Super Scrolls and mm. old school Josiah X because. When we found out, when I found out he's gonna get a legacy card, I was like, "Well, I gotta play the OG, the Goat Josiah X, because that's why I always played Super Scroll. I love playing him with Josiah X. He's reducing pen. He's got super sense. He's got shape change. You know, so it was just a total blast playing Hero Clicks on Sunday. And then, yeah, everything you said about the costumes and like and everything, it's I've been fun. Got my last thing in today, which was ironically a yellow shirt. I could not find a yellow shirt for the life of me <laughs> anywhere, like Walmart, Target, whatever. A normal like." medium yellow shirt for a guy to wear. I was like, they do not exist, apparently, a bright yellow shirt. So finally got that. I got all all the yeah, I got all the pieces for Wario done. I'm very excited to wear them. And then I got the first couple layers of paint on for the tennis rackets Ooh. that look <laughs> look really goofy. It looks really cool. So I'm really excited to see those. But yeah, this week has literally just been like countdown to Nebraska. I love Nebraska. It's one of my favorite conventions I've ever been to, like, consistently. I love going every single year. I've been going since 2017. I love NebCon, so I'm very excited for, like, you to experience it for the first time, too. We'll see. Really, we'll see how it goes. I'm, really, I'm, I'm so excited. A little too. nervous. Like, it's so like, a guest that I'm excited for is, like, number one, like, ProZD is there, for those that know about it. I'm like, that's really cool. And then uh, Kyle Hebert, he's the voice of Kamina from Gurren Lagann, and that's, like, Besides Those are just JoJo's, like words to I me. Get. I, people that know Gurren Lagann and Gurren Lagann. I'm not hating. It's just like it's just a really good anime, and like mm. he he plays like who I thought was the main character until seven episodes in, and we realized, oh, he, I guess he's not. Uh, but like Gurren Lagann has like some of the best episodes in just all of anime, purely because of Kamina and especially that voice actor that brings him to life. It's just he's a very boisterous, uh, like masculine character who you know is like a fight first, think never, you know, shoot first, think never kind of a guy, which is just really awesome. And he's just this really inspiring character to everybody else in the show. So he just, he brings that energy that I love seeing in anime. So, you know, he's just a guest that I'm particularly excited for because that is really one of my favorite anime characters of all time. But we also did have a a winner. We're going to crown this person the winner. So last week we said, if you could guess who we were with based on if you have a hat and a tennis racket, we'd send you something. So Dustin Kennedy messaged me at like midnight, and I was Wild. out. I was out and about, and I pulled my phone out. I was like, "Oh no way!" <laughs> but he did guess Waluigi and Luigi, and we had another person guess. I believe the next day, yeah, the same Alex thing. Morris. He did. He, yeah, he guessed Waluigi, Luigi, or maybe Wario is, is how he said it. Mm. So he also did throw Wario in there as well. But he was second. But he was second. Maybe we'll send you some you consolation. Might you might get a little something, Alex. But he said, what's funny is he followed up his message after he guessed, I'm sure it's wrong, haha, but that would be a great setup for you guys. And I said, you're half right. I'll give you the prize. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, congratulations, Dustin. That was good detective work. Kind of blew my mind how many yeah. people, like, the people that guessed were all within the Mario realm, though, of things. I don't think I, I heard or saw one guess that was not within Mario. I was expecting, like, there's got to be some anime tennis that's what i would have thought it would have been there's got to be something right but uh i guess no no so hats off to you guys and rackets out for us (laughs) let's get into some round black panther (laughs) yeah let's do black panther here ian do you have something you want to talk about right away from all these past unboxings and stuff yeah oh my goodness this this is just a crazy crazy prime one that 
I know I'm going to be. I do like him a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this figure's insane, and he does so many things that I like in the game. We are going to talk about the 031B Colonel James Rhodes. You know, if you guys watched the, unvi- or the unboxing video, I had said, like, anytime we see War, War Machine, I'm happy. War Machine just rocks. This just, one is probably cool. the best one they've ever printed, and I don't think second place is, like, even close. Yeah. This figure is insane. So let's just get into what he does. Shield keyword, Stark Industries, Armor, Politician, a rising keyword, and Soldier. So the big thing, the big draw for me, is the remote drone piloting. During force construction, you may add five points to Colonel James Rhodes' cost up to six times, so 30 total. For each time you choose to do so, add a War Machine drone bystander to your starting force. Leadership. When Colonel James Rhodes uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, generate a War Machine drone bystander, max of Mm. six. He also has some improved targeting of elevated and hindering, which will very much come into play in just a moment here. Uh, 80 points, 10, 12, 18, 3, running shot, special, special, blank. This is the big draw. So, helicarrier bombardment, and quite literally, this is a bombardment. Yeah. Penetrating psychic blast, power. For each war machine drone bystander, choose an opposing character within range and line of fire of that bystander. The chosen, or sorry, make a range attack that targets the chosen character regardless of range and line of fire. Hit characters are dealt two damage instead of normal damage. This is, oh my gosh, just yeah. sending these drones out. We haven't even talked about the drones yet. So very quickly, his defense special, also fantastic. Energy shield deflection, invincible, super senses, protected outwit. This is like, that's going to keep him safe. Super sense is invincible. Yep. You can't ask for a better power pairing. Great stats. And in addition, these bystanders have shield TA as well. And they're sidestep. Oh my goodness, 611, 17, 3, 4 range. They're flyers as well. Sidestep flight. You can pay five that is points so for one. Good. Ugh, You'll probably. So good. I don't know how many you start with. I want to mess around with a team that has six. Like, no starting, question. I mean, try starting around. I feel like since one is just made with leadership, though, you always go five. No, nah, no way. Six. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, if you just, you know, I would, think, I would just yeah. bank on a leadership. I feel like four is a pretty sweet spot, you know? Realistically, it's probably in the two to four range. I mean, because he has yeah. shield, so it's like you're probably looking to max out your shield. But there's other figures in the set, like Everett K. Ross, who also hand out shield to like Wakanda. So right. shield maxing is back on the menu. We lost A60 shield. Spider-Man. I love shield maxing so oh, dude, much, dude. It's, it's the so best. Fun. Any effect that says within range... Oh, go back to him, baby, because this yep. this James Rhodes, he's going to be enabling it. First thought, Constantine. He has nine range now. Dang. Just Dang, for starting right. out the game. And those can cart Constantine around as well, which yeah. rocks. So, yeah, just bumping up everybody's range. Also, just taking yeah, power actions to boost damage. Crazy strong. This is This is wild. Another thing, too, is the bystanders themselves don't have a point cost. So you can pay Ooh. however many points. And just suicide these drones over and over and over. You can also blockade with these. You know, you can play them with the barrel, really trip people up, shut off their improved movement, base them with a drone, bombard them the same turn. Yeah. But on top of that, a running shot, triple target, psychic blast is also just good. That's just really good. So this figure rocks. I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, I don't even have to equip this guy. I don't even know what you give him. In modern right now, I'm not sure. Not a whole lot. But you don't need to. Yeah. You really don't. This figure is very complete, a definite competitor for the prime slot, and very, very worthy prime it's effect. It's also just a very different prime and prime effect that we've gotten as of late. A lot of primes have just been really cheap technical pieces or something like that. I punch hard. And I love that this guy is like a big 80 point to like 100 point ish, mm-hmm. 110 point figure, I guess, at his max. And so I just, I don't know, that's what I like to see for more primes, you know, kind of going back to like some nuance and stuff, a little bit more nuance. They do something totally different. This dude, like (laughs) paying all these extra points to have these bystanders shoot through. You're not going to find this anywhere else. It's crazy cool. Yeah. So I feel like instead of just having weird kind of like cheap effects, he instead is like a higher point prime, which I'm just a fan Mm -hmm. of seeing. So I really, I really like War Machine and also just. His dial's oh, also sick. relatively similar to Spider-Man Prime in terms of how you take him down. Spider-Man oh, Prime sure. was deal four damage to him. He loses his protected defense, and then you just murder him. Yeah. 
This is going to be the same story. That protected out wit is going to keep him pretty safe, unless you're like Captain America. But yeah. he's the answer to just about everything. He kind of is, yeah. <laughs> so, except for, unless you're King Jefferson, he's got to stop on attack. Right. But this is, yeah, this is a really cool figure. I might go out and say, as of right now, probably the thing I am most excited for. There's maybe sure. one thing I'm going to talk about later that I'm more excited for, just because his potential okay. is just through the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Calder, hit us with another. Sure. One of my top picks is Falcon and Red Wing. I just absolutely adore that this exists. This is like very classic Captain America comics. It's like first appearance of Sam Wilson when he's like more of like a falconer. He doesn't like fly or have any of the wings. This dude looks like Nightwing stuff. at the circus, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> Which a crazy, is cool. crazy costume what he has. He's like sewing it, making it on this island. And Sam Wilson kind of has a really weird origin story in comics that's like super messy and all over the place. But I just love this version of Sam, and I really like what it does. So kind of, again, along the bystander route, though. So he's like a wild card, Avengers animal, and martial artist, which is really cool. Sam doesn't often get martial artists, but he did train. So, you know, re represent. It's cool. He's 40 points. He's very, like, low click dial. He has, like, sidestep outwit top dial, and then he has charge with close combat expert on his last two clicks with an entire dial of combat reflexes and his special attack power. He has a few different traits here, so nothing we can't do together. When Falcon and Red Wing start the game, you generate a Red Wing bystander, which has no right being this good. It's a 8-speed hypersonic, 12 attack precision strike, 17 defense super senses, 1 damage enhancement, which is really good. And if Falcon and Red Wing is part of a theme team, when a friendly bystander would be KO'd, you may roll a d6. On a 4 through 6, you place that bystander adjacent to Falcon and Red Wing instead. So this guy saves all your bystanders, he keeps them alive. And now you're thinking, like, well, Calder, he's only Avengers, Animal, or Martial Artist. Well, that's why this next trait is really cool. So it gives, so it's traits called Trained by the Best, Toughness. When establishing theme teams, you may choose a friendly character named Captain America. Falcon and Red Wing gain all the keywords of the chosen character. So that can be, you know, Captain America, who is Shield. Now, yeah, Shield, Soldier, stuff like that. Or Captain America from Hellfire Gala, make this an X-Men team or whatever for any X-Men bystanders there are. So now Falcon and Red Wing's keyword possibilities are open to every Captain America that exists, which is super cool. His special attack power is Red Wing, go get him. Telekinesis as free, but only the target bystanders. I think that's hilarious. He's like, go get him. That's really cute. And then free, make a close attack, but only the target a character that a character named Red Wing hit this turn regardless of adjacency. So Red Wing can go like TK, what? TK Red Wing out. Hypersonic four squares, eight. eight, so it's a 12 square reach, and then Falcon can just punch. So yeah, one like plus 12, character. hitting one more, so 14. So almost yeah. full map. Almost full map, sending Red Wing out, and then regardless of adjacency, he can just punch somebody across the map, which is really cool. So I really like it. I think it's a ton of fun. Messing around with bystanders is cool, and of course, Falcon is Captain America's right hand man. So I'm just really excited to like mess around with this guy. Silver Ring, fair enough, I guess. It would have been cool to run like a team. Well, stacking that trait though, like four oh, through six, four true. through six, four that's through true. six. Ew, that'd be kind of wild. As a unique though, love this effect. I, I think mean, it's awesome. Bystander generation is just—it's one it's of the, the most coolest. fun things to do in the game. It's annoying. You can just make a factory of whatever you want. And it's a blast. Yeah. So I dig it too. And maybe you want to play him with uh, with War Machine. Oh, absolutely, dude. Keeping all those little Shooting across alive. the map, punching yeah. across the map. Oh, you killed it, JK. Even yep. if you did, you don't score anything. That's Yeah, like now fun. it's like, oh, now you want all the way back to Falcon Red Wing? Okay, TK him up for free. Get the little little guy back out there. Yeah, yeah it rocks. Maybe a good pairing in silver with the Legacy APOC to Ooh, bring so back. Yeah, Because those cost uh. points... And it is when they would be KO'd. Mm -hmm. So I guess now it's, yeah, a 50-50 roll to just keep At the same time, alive. he doesn't oh, have so any nasty. way to... He doesn't have any way to bring Red Wing back if it dies. No, and not except for that trait. They go back adjacent to Red Wing, correct? To Falcon and Red Wing. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, it goes back... To, okay, perfect. It goes back to him, yeah. That's a lot better. I thought it was yeah. back to the bystander. No, like, no, no, That's no, risky. No. So, yeah, that is uh, super, super cool. I really dig that. I think it'll be fun. And another one that I think will be a ton of fun comes in the chase department, and that is Chaos King. This is a figure that I was really excited to see back. It's a cool character. Granted, not one I know a ton about, but just always appreciated the look of. And absolute monster back in the day. 350 points. 
opening stats, if I'm not mistaken, you might have to fact check me. 12, 10, 17, 6 with Pulse Wave Prob, Impervious, and Running Shot. Oh, the OG one? The OG Chaos King, I believe, opened with a 12, 10 attack. 12, 12 10, 10, 17, 17 6. 6. Double check it. We got the fact Back checkers checking, running, fact guys. Checking. Fact checking. Am I right? Fact checking. Yeah. Oh, wow, I'll be darn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, this figure was a blast. And it was this was back when dials weren't on cards, Calder. So if you look at the old Chaos King's mid dial, he switched into a hypersonic yeah. smoke cloud piece. I don't Which know. Which I'm who. sure people use that oh, a lot. All the time. But so the way that you would, you know, beat him is you'd hit him down, hit him past those clicks. Points. I know. He was never quite worth okay. it. Okay. <laughs> but people still played him, people had a good time. People would typically play him down dial. But you'd always hit him past the hypersonic clicks because, you know. Yeah, you don't want to you don't wanna have him stop on that. But, I mean, but back then, he know, was a six-range pulse wave mm-hmm. with a full six damage on somebody. So, he was just deleting oh, yeah. people back in the day, I guess. It was a so, delete yeah. key. It was fun. You could perplex that damage, pretty gnarly. too. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I got some, like, seven, eight damage, damage. Oh. pulse waves off with him. Oh. So, let's talk about the new one. Uh, the new one is 250 or 75 points. Keywords are God Squad, Cosmic, Deity, and Ruler. All very common within the set. Uh, only improved movement, which is destroy blocking, so no improved targeting. But the big thing that makes them fun, and I 100% will be playing them at full points. They're not unique, though, so you could also oh. play three of them at 225 if you're a lunatic and you own three of them. <laughs> so it's Chaos Incarnate. Free, roll a d6 and perform the resulting effect. Perform, is that a new keyword? It might be. <laughs> perform, like a new, like, yeah, flavor or type. Da, 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 da. Hey. <laughs> you have to jazz hands. May, while you're... may not, perform, resolve. <laughs> Interesting. If Chaos King is 250 points, you may instead roll a d6 up to three times and perform the resulting effects in any order. One, Choose a character, so any character, not friendly or opposing, and deal it one unavoidable damage. That is very good. Two, heal every character within two squares, two clicks. That counts himself, also very good. Three, give each other character within range an action token. Oh my gosh, that in multiples would be hilarious. Yeah. Four, you and your opponent each choose a character. Choose... Chosen characters modify their combat values by plus one until your next turn. So this benefits your opponent, but guess what? You can pulse wave them. It's gone. And also, again, in multiples, if you just stacked yeah. up a Chaos King to a 15-8, hilarious. <laughs> Five, make an attack. That's always good. A yeah, free attack? Sure. Six, place Chaos King in a square within range. Rolling multiple sixes. Hol- again, just hilarious. This is an effect that seems like so much fun to me. Maybe I will be the lunatic who gets a couple of these. Send me your Chaos King. That's so wild. Send me your Chaos King. Hey, I'll make it worth your while. Send me a little Chaos King. I'm a a man of chaos myself. I'm a man of chaos. I live in New York. (laughs) I'm in a jail. I'm the Chaos King of New York. (laughs) (laughs) chaos for walking dude. chaos for walking Again, if you guys haven't taken away anything from this show, take away this. Watch The King of New York. You have not. I mean, what are you doing if you haven't seen The King of New York? Oh, my gosh. What are you doing? So good. What are you doing? What's going on? I'm, I'm the chaos <laughs> king of New York. <laughs> That's a good That might be a shirt. That, honestly, yeah, that could be a shirt. That's so <laughs> funny. You guys let us know. So, yeah, uh. Chaos King, I think... As of right now, oh I know gosh. there's like way stronger chases, but Chaos King to me <laughs> looks like the one I'm going to enjoy the most and just be really stupid with. Oh. So that what do you what else you got, Calder? What do you want to highlight? I love that. <laughs> Can't get over it. <laughs> uh, I gotta talk about Arnim Zola. I'm a big Captain America guy. I've been waiting for this version of Arnim Zola since 2014. <laughs> In 2014, we had one of the best Captain Americas ever, uh, like Captain America comic runs by Rick Remder and uh, John Romita Jr. And it was just, it, to me, it absolutely redefined Captain America as a character. And of course, by the end of that run, we get Sam Wilson as Captain America. But during it, it starts off super early where Cap is trapped in Dimension Z's. That's very much what this, like, Arnim Zola represents here. So he is Hydra robot ruler, scientist, Hydra team ability, and then master of biological manipulation when establishing theme teams friendly characters on your force with the monster keyword 
gain Arnim Zola's keywords, and then they can use Hydra this game, which is really cool. And then slash slash, if two or more opposing characters share a name with each other, they modify their attack minus two. So a major Logan-esque people sharing a name with each other effect, which is really cute. So now, if you have a swarm team on the opponent's side, right, if they have a bunch of Hydra agents or shield agents. War machine drones. Is, war machine drones. All those drones are now like a nine attack, which is kind of crazy. So I think this is just really cool. Another I note super on that. enjoy it. Yeah. So the robot keyword has been something that has been lacking for a minute. It has, it has yeah. not. It has not really shown up since about like XDPS. So a couple of rotations ago. This makes it so you can play Brimstone. Because he is a robot. The mm -hmm. retaliation from yeah, yeah, yeah. the legacy card from Notorious. Yeah. That's a 15-point beast. And Monster he has awesome. plenty of work with. So the fact that they gain all of these keywords, too. Yeah. It can also make them scientists if you want to. Scientist is always a strong pretty keyword stout, recently. Yeah. yeah. Ruler is getting you know pretty dang good recently mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of good keywords to kind of mess around. I will say Arnhem is expensive. 125 yeah. is a tough line. 75 is very lacking Maybe with the motorcycle, but then like the defenses are kind of wild. You on know, 75. you know, you're down bad when you're like, maybe the motorcycle maybe fixes the motor this. Honestly, yeah. So it's like every time I have that thought, I'm like, I know I'm lying to myself. Yeah, it is a little scary. I do love his stop click though, but well, anyways, we'll do his leadership. So, leadership, he succeeds on a four through six, and this is really cool when Armzilla uses it and fails. After resolutions, generate a mutate bystander. Uh, a mutate is a charge, blaze, invulnerability, exploit piece. Really sick. It is this uh, Zola mutate version of Captain America, which is really cool, cool. So all these mutates also have the Hydra team ability, which is also neat. So now on a failed leadership, so when he fails to make a perfect clone of Captain America, he makes this mutate, this, this gross mutate. So screwed up. That's like really cool. Well, you, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, yeah, it's like <laughs> it is. No, it is all kind of messed up. Mutate. It's like messed up and all gross, and like all of these clones are like weird clones of Captain America, which is really cool. But I do like the one thing about him, which is cool. Kind of makes up for some of his like high point cost of his dial is his defense power at the end. So you have failed Zola. Stop giant. Also on this click, it totally like changes his power. So he's like a sidestep, close combat expert. He's a twelve for four. Uh, Pensai, which is really cool. So stop, colossal damage symbol. Mastermind. When Zola, when Arm Zola uses it and the chosen character is KO'd, if that character wasn't a mutate bystander, you generate a mutate bystander in the square that character last occupied. So you can go ahead, KO as many people as you want the first time, and then you can just mastermind to all these mutates. Because now you're just generating more and more mutates to mastermind to eventually. Oh yeah. So it's actually like kind of cool to where it's like, Okay, sure, he's 75 points, but he's not really a 75 points you want to knock down to this click because he's way less of a threat, like borderline not a threat at, like, at all on his like 75 point line. And you can't, More of a threat you can't knock back point. kill him because he goes colossal. So he'll. He, exactly, yeah, he you won't can't knock back knock kill him back. or anything, yeah. But so, you can just poison him. You could poison him. Maybe he still has Mastermind. He doesn't have any toughness yeah. or anything. So there are like other ways around that stock click. This seems like I a figure that really will like eat it. up. I mean, it's really cool, but it's action fun. economy is going to be tough for him. Oh, yeah. He's relying heavily. Again, I mean, well, if you guys haven't realized, we really like bystanders. Yeah, I mean, it's just a fun, again, yeah, bystander generation. It just kind of rocks. So I really like it, but also because the last Arnim Zola we got was this weird, like, Gwen Stacy making yeah. one, which is just like, yeah, I don't that know. One was That's strange. just not Arnim Zola to me. This one is very much from a story that is like completely redefined the character and makes way more sense, like modern times. I mean, geez, even the Captain America run last year references like Dimension Z in this world that Arnim Zola built. So this is very much like a modern take on Zola, and it's so refreshing to have because number one, again, he hasn't been made in ten years. So like I'm super excited about it. He's really fun. He's super comic accurate, and I'm just I know I'm gonna have a blast playing him as we start to see. Hydra gain a little more love after we lost a 60 Hydra is like non-existent mm -hmm. so it's literally like this dude and some Hydra agents and Deadpool weapon X you know so hopefully we see more but either way I'm excited to build with the monster keyword slash Hydra robot ruler and scientist yeah anything that bends monster is nice because a lot of the time monster just lacks like the support, support. powers they really lack support so being able to bring in some new guys I mean we saw it a ton with APOC and Genesis yeah Seems like it could be something. All right. Let's talk about Mephisto Jr. here. Okay. Oh my gosh, this piece is insane. You guys have heard us talk about Despero plenty. We love Despero. Love him. This guy 
dare I say, kind of stunts on he Despero. Kinda, no, he does kind of stunt on Despero. Mm-hmm. I honestly am a little bummed that he does, but he stunts little, on Despero hard. little double up two-hand jam on Despero right here. Just bam, dunking on him. And the reason why, he is less points. His effect that you're probably playing for him is twice as powerful. And the the back draw on this guy, I think, or the drawback, geez, is Illuminati, Wakanda, Ruler, and Warrior are his keywords. Yeah, these I are think tough keywords. Ruler is, is workable. Maybe there's something with Wakanda. Illuminati, probably not. Warrior, maybe. Is there some keyword bending in Warrior still? Possibly. Gosh, if Genesis was still around, this would be just... Ugh. Anyway. That would be so gnarly, actually. Oh, my gosh. What makes him so good? He's just a plasticity mastermind special power piece at 30 points who switches to force blast barrier ian what could possibly be going on here well let me tell you what could possibly be going on here (laughs) all right guys welcome this is vince with the slap chow oh geez slap chow that would be a great costume for you to do actually that would be really funny (laughs) i loved all the parodies back in the day but this ain't no joke calder this is sorry this is real serious this is real hero clicks for real players we've got absolute authority as a trait Trust me, he does. At the beginning of the game, you may choose up to two game elements on your opponent's sideline. Game elements chosen for this trait can't be brought into the game or use sideline active effects. Kathan, Kanchu, Amit, Taret, Butterfly, see ya. Goodbye. Salute. You're going down. It's so insanely strong where it's like, oh, wow, Despero, he gets rid of one. And I was loving getting rid of just one because there's already Mm -hmm. such a limited amount of sideline elements in modern right now. But two? Two is crazy. Two? That actually is seriously nuts. Beetlejuice, goodbye. Pilots, nah. see ya. Pilots, yeah, dude. Actually, gone. Like Ghost Rider, if you're playing the Super well, Rare now? Change? Nah. You probably got to bring no a couple now. Yeah. Because it's like, you no, you don't get to have those. Oh, you say I can't use? No, you can't use. Yeah. It's a little back and forth. It's a little gnarly. Play so, this guy just with Despero. Yeah, points. Yeah. Just get rid of three things right away on their sideboard. Half their sideline is You gone. win at the start of the match. That is hilarious. You, you've already had a great time. But yeah, I do love that they're keeping the sideline in check, but two is like, dude, this is strong. Yeah. That's really strong. it's not strong. the only thing he does. One more quick note on that. I did mention Butterfly, and I know there's going to be some listeners going, well, Ian, if you don't go first, then you don't get to pick. Hold on. So they do their Butterfly swap. And then you pick Butterfly. Now that Butterfly doesn't get to come in when they die. Ew. So you still get the consolation prize of that. It doesn't get to use the sideline active effects of giving them the powers either. So it just becomes that figure. Mm. So it's still very good. Sure, they might still get to bring in their Mern or their Major Logan and they foil your plans a bit. But they'll have to second guess a little bit because they might have some tactics built around the additional sideline bonuses that Butterfly offers. And Black Panther says no, no, no. In addition to one other thing. I mean, taking away Cathan is just, it's so good. Taking away Kanchu really is so, so, so good. So I've heard a lot, I've heard, well, not a lot. I've heard a decent amount of chatter where it's like, oh, I don't want to invest in Despero because what if my opponent doesn't have like an impactful sideline element? One, they will. They always will. Yeah. Well, like, come on. It's like, what if they're playing a one man army? I mean, come on. I mean, that. Come on now. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. not super realistic it's in the setting in that this figure will show yeah. up in. Because you're probably not playing too much with the sideline in a more casual format. The shifting Batman, being able to take away two of those, being able to take away the can't use power, definitely makes me a little nervous. Could go on and on. This Black Panther is amazing. But again, not all he does. King of Wakanda is his damage power, which is leadership outwit. That's already fantastic. But he also has free. Remove any one vibranium token from your sideline. If you do, remove an action token from a friendly character. So this is why I say Mephisto Jr., because he was an engine figure. Black Panther is going to perform very similarly. Yes, you do need Vibranium tokens, but there are a million ways to generate. There's plenty with the Ruler, the Wakanda, and the Warrior keyword. So if you're looking to theme with him, boom, there you go. If not, throw on one of the cheap ones. I'm a really big fan of the Uncommon Shuri. She generates them. She can give them armor. She can give them weapons. And uh, she's also a TK. So I think as of right now... The most meta thing we've seen in this set very well could be that Black Panther. My opinion isn't fully formed there, Honestly, so if I'm wrong, yeah. roast me alive. But he's insane. I If I'm playing non-theme, I feel like that guy's going to make like the team 9 out of 10 times. That effect is just so good. Just instantly having an impact the second he's put on the board is 
It's undeniable. It's very good. So there you go, guys. No, I think he's stupid strong. Like <laughs> crazy, crazy, insanely, <laughs> insanely strong. So yeah. But also, I guess there's also these you know, like sideline active gods that are coming in. There's mm-hmm. obviously there's Seth, there's Gaia, there's Adam, and all these things he can also stop, which are all kind of crazy strong in their own right too. So yes. he's also just instantly stopping them. And I do love that when we have crazy strong mechanics that are brought back into a set or introduced in a set and then also within that set there's something that keeps it in check i think Mm -hmm. it's very necessary so i do just i really do just like that black panther i want to talk a little bit about josiah x for like the last one i won't lie i'm not in love with the recreation of josiah x like but i do like kind of where they went with this direction and kind of how it works as a legacy figure so there is a misprint. Um, I assume all the references to Manifold on his trait should be changed nah. to Josiah X. Nah. Unless he's just handing this out to his buddy Manifold. I love I you, guess. Manifold. Manifold, you're the realest one I know, bro. <laughs> I love you so much. You're so cool. He's like making a bird with his hands. Like, don't forget me, bro. Don't forget me, Manifold. Oh, goodness gracious. But <laughs> anyway, Josiah X is past politician, scientist, soldier, and warrior. He has the crew trait. I'm not going to get into it, but... Basically, okay, sure. Man, bl- <laughs> Josiah X can use the following effects based on the number of friendly characters. That's not what it says. Trait. I know, but it's going to say Josiah <laughs> X eventually. With this trait on the map. So if there's two or more friendly characters of the crew, he gets willpower. Three or more, you modify his defense plus one. Four or more, free heal adjacent friendly character with this trait one click. Now, I do love that for Josiah X because typically in the past... He would get punked right away, or he'd get knocked off his damage power, and you'd be like, oh, shoot, I need a way to heal him or something. Yeah, I remember that happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, his next oh, trait. <sighs> Vulture is such uh, BS. Isaiah Bradley's <laughs> shield. So, super strength. If Josiah X is holding a terrain marker, modify his defense, and the defense of adjacent friendly characters, plus one. So now, if you have three people with the crew trait, plus he's holding a marker, everybody's got plus two defense for the next Josiah X, which is really cool. He was always a big defensive piece, which is awesome. And I do like this trait for representing holding a shield or something. So, like, that's really cool. Again, something that interacts with terrain markers. I think that's just super neat. Big trouble and little Magadishu. I don't know. Mogadishu. Mogadishu. Sure. I think so. Let's go with that. Anyways, great reference to Big Trouble in Little China. Hilarious. I love it. Josiah X and other friendly characters with the crew trait can reduce penetrating damage. So, this is no longer on his damage power. That's where it used to be. His damage power used to just be called the crew and let him do this. This is just, I don't know, it's the different. The crew has be- become more selective. The crew is more selective. It used to be everybody that shared a keyword with him or was adjacent to him. And I love that because soldier is my favorite keyword. And this now meant that all my soldiers, my super scrolls, everybody, Captain America's, all that stuff could reduce penetrating damage, which was huge. Now this is just way more limiting, may- way more selective. And I won't lie, that hurts me for how I like to use to play Josiah X, so I probably will still use the old version more for my style of play. Mm-hmm. But like as just a version of Josiah, I think this does him, like he himself, more justice versus a team player justice, right? So yep. I think for making him act more as himself, because before this, I just literally stuck Josiah X in the back, kept him there. He generated Iron Man bystanders, basically, using the Earth yeah. X map. So, like, now he becomes more of, like, a major player. He wants to be up in the fight. He wants to stay adjacent to his friends and keeping them safe. So, I do like that. And that's also uh, reflected by his damage power, Embracing the Truth, which I assume is a great callback, again, reference to the Truth comic book, which gives him empower enhancement leadership. So, he's just this great, like, leader. He gives a great bonus to defenses and everything. He helps reduce penetrating damage. I don't remember who all has the crew. I guess Luke Cage has it. He's got Luke Invincible Cage, Toxile. Storm. Okay. Cole wing I don't know how many of those guys all have mm-hmm. reducers necessarily besides Josiah himself Colleen Wing's got oh, wait, combat sorry, reflexes. Misty Knight has it, not Colleen Misty Wing. Knight, I guess she has toughness on her 30 point line versus her uh, her whatever, do they all even share a keyword? I don't even know if the crew quote unquote shares a keyword, I don't know, that's kind of funny anyways, but I do just like this update for just him as a character as opposed to how I used to play it, kind of keeping him in the back. It's just a cool, like, different way to do it, even if I am a little disappointed in his big trouble and little Magadishu trait. Oh, but man. I, it's a cool figure. It's it, really a, is. It, it is a really cool figure. I really I, like the crew trait. I'm looking forward to trying out the crew together as a team. I think they're a really cute little uh, little Hero Hooks team that got introduced. 
And wow, just like that, we're going to go to our listener mailbag. We got an email this week, Ian. It doesn't always happen that we no, get an it doesn't. email. But and sometimes you provoke. And when you do, there when was you, maybe when you shake the tree provoking. known as Michael Nelson, sometimes <laughs> some beautiful fruit falls. And that's, that's true. what we have today. So we challenged Michael, I think a couple of weeks ago, to build a team Some, with the Battle Gnomes. Somewhere around Battle Gnome time, yeah. And he uh, he definitely did. He brought us some really cool tactics. So we'll just go through some notes from him. He says, since gnomes are tiny, they aren't standard for Kingpin Prime. So sorry for misleading you guys. So I went a different route. More past alpha, since you guys seem to like that. Yes, do we do. Love, we I do, do love like past that, alpha. Michael. Comet with Cathan and Bucky's arm. So plus two attack and damage. That seems pretty nice. <laughs> Pilot is usually DC 24 Supergirl for good last click and exploit. Ends up being a 13 for 5 exploit piece. You can also bring Ultra Chase Superman to turn back time for memes. So if you guys are memers, get that Ultra Chase Superman. Make a great atta- It makes for a great attacker for a Diana follow-up if you don't want to bring in Har- Bardley Quinn. <laughs> I, love, I love the nickname, calling her Bardley Quinn. I'm instantly going to change oh, that now, dude. That's hilarious. And so feel free to hit me up if you want to see how it plays beyond just theory. I mean, possibly. So lineup is as follows. It's Comet, Perdegaton, Gnome 1, Timebreaker 1, Diana, Flash Raptor, Bardley Quinn, Gnome 2, Timebreaker 2. And so he goes into some strategy about how you can get a gnome across the board in one action. You can place like a barrel or traffic cone to really just like screw them up again. Uh, And at any point, the gnomes could have a sidestep to pick up like along the path they can just grab the barrel or drop the barrel it's like if you go second you can tk comet instead of diana and be relatively safe since neither gnome have been given costed actions they can't be targeted by larger characters which is obviously what we want to build around and so he spells out basically a big alpha getting the gnomes across keeping them safe and then also creating like a decent amount of disruption if you do go second so this is a really cool team He says it works as a turn one opener when going first to disrupt enemy deployment. Going second, it can also be a good way to possibly stop your opponent's alpha strike. And then you can also use it as an alpha strike alongside Diana, Bardley, or the Flash Raptor core. So basically, the general strategy is to get people across the map using Flash Raptor and Diana. The gnomes are free to move, free to be TK'd by the team. And then you just get to, like, light them up. Yeah. With relative safety. So the last note is, if you play against a Despero or a Petal Juice, you just cry. That is so funny. Which is pretty funny. <laughs> Shutting off reaction is yeah. tough. So I would read out this full strategy that you wrote out here, Michael, but I don't know how well this is going to translate. I don't know if I fully understand this. And but do it justice, yeah. What fair. I'm seeing is you're TKing the team. You're TKing the gnomes. You're carrying with Diana, or you're moving with Diana, making the attack and placing you're doing similar with Flash Raptor. So you guys kind of get the gist. Things are coming across the board. The gnomes are relatively protected. If you go first, you can do some big damage. So Michael, let me know if we got that right. If you would like to dive in and Ooh. explore this team a bit more, let us know how it plays. Feel free to. If you want to make it more gnomified, you know, maybe maybe do that. Maybe get some more gnomes <laughs> on the build somehow, one way or another. Another challenge, possibly. Mm. But... If you do like to hear about this, guys, you can join our Discord. You want to tell them about that, Calder? Absolutely. So over on the Discord, guys, we have an amazing community there. So joining Discord is going to be by joining Patreon for $5 every month. You get access to our Discord. We have just a phenomenal amount of people. So we got about like, what, 40, 50 something people in this Discord. And we're crazy active. There's always people being 61. like... 61. 61. Yeah. A crazy amount of people that are always, you know, playing games, looking for games on Roll20, playing some pickup hero clicks, just chatting about hero click strategy, life, whatever, anything in general. So we have a phenomenal time on Discord. I always have great conversations with all our like Patreon members there and everything. So it's just an absolute blast. Plus, you guys support the show and hang out with us actually like quite a bit. We join like the old Discord yeah. general. If you're and a night owl, oh, I'm yeah. around. Oh yeah. And we got some great staple characters in there. You guys know who you are that always just kind of keep the Discord nice and lively and have a good time. So if you want to support us and get a great bang for your buck, feel free to do that over on Patreon and join our Discord. But we have a few questions over there. SuperCab007 asks, Light spoilers for the new DC Universe. Darkseid has merged with the Spectre. What's that going to look like as a click, and how is he going to overpower the Masters of Time Darkseid? I don't know. That's kind of gnarly. Dark side mixed with the specter. I don't know. Like, how does mm. how is he the spirit of vengeance? I'm kind of curious how that would necessarily work. I don't work. know. 
Dark side with like a big his the hood and cloak. I bet he looks cool, but yeah, he looks pretty. Yeah, sick. I was like that doesn't make sense to me. Isn't the Spectre just a normal guy <laughs> that gets like possessed by the Spectre? Uh, right? Like Hal Jordan like has been dude. the the Spectre, Jim Corrigan okay. as well. Like a well, Jim Corrigan isn't he just a guy? Like he's just a yeah. dude, right? Yeah, but he's looking for vengeance. Okay, is Dark Side sure. looking for vengeance? Just looking to kill everybody. Right? I think he's and just looking. Yeah, him. he's kind of a. I want to. I need to I know, know more about this to answer this. But what's that going to look like as a click? Uh, cool probably is cool. the answer. Yeah, Very cool. Sick. I would like it again if it was another floating dark side. How the last one yeah, is okay. floating with the laser beam. This one can float, and the cape can be flowing or something. That'd be pretty cool. If you made him like semi translucent, like go that. a little crazy for yeah. that. Down like with that. that. Tyler M asks, with James Gunn using some more obscure characters in his movies, do you think corporate synergy will push characters that haven't been clicks in a few years into newer sets? I would hope so. I know we noticed it a lot with the MCU back in the day. I think it was like around Battle World where we got like Killmonger as a figure. and he was We got like, Peacemaker twice. Oh yeah, we got Peacemaker three twice. Times. Also that. Well, we got Peacemaker straight up as like a character, like comic Peacemaker, who probably wouldn't have been in that set had he not been so popular in everything else, right? And then because he was so popular, straight up just got those TV show like parts into hero clicks, which is yeah. really cool. So and that's James Gunn. I hope so. Yeah, that's James Gunn tried and true right there. So I would really hope so. Like we got the, Polka Dot Man and Notorious. That's not true. Yeah, we got and Polka that was Dot very Man. like akin to the movie suit. I don't exactly. really know how Polka Dot Man has looked in the past, but I he imagine like he's looked suit. a bit different at times. So that was a Maybe. movie suit. Yeah. So yeah, if uh, if a character sells well, like you know, if a character becomes popular or even like Mimi, I mean, I think another example is like we've seen a lot of Wong. Wong's yeah. not like a particularly, you know, like standout amazing character. Yeah, right? I mean, in actual comics. But comic people know books, who he is. Who is he? Yeah. No, well, I mean, in comics, it's like, yeah, I guess Wong is here. He's just kind of Doctor Strange, just, you know, butler or whatever. He's Wong him. And so now, like, the movies have propelled him into such a more, like, more prominent role, I guess, mm-hmm. that he's had than. than you know, had we had a. Past. We had a Deadpool and or Wolverine set recently. Right. Pro, like, around the same time as the movie. So you, I think you can safely assume that. If something is going to do well in the media, or if it has done well, then yeah, there's a good chance yeah. of that. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of other things that are doing well that they might be looking at and going, hmm, exactly, maybe. And you know, I hate Superman. I don't have to tell you guys that every single week, but I will. But uh, oh, the yeah. Superman movie is looking at least kind of cool. Yeah, you know, cautiously optimistic. Okay, I'll say this at least: it has characters in it that I am excited for. Yeah, it has characters. I'll agree I like. with you on that. The Terrifics are a cool comic team. Guy Superman's Gardner is my favorite character. Pretty, you know, pretty overdue for like a main set. I would. Well, let's see. We Superman got the death of Wonder Superman. Was like the last Superman, like main booster set with Superman and Wonder Woman. That's Gosh, like 2015. Yeah. yeah, it was like ten years ago while at this ago. point. Guys, I hate this guy, but yeah, he's probably overdue for like a main character set. Yeah. He probably is. Like, you know, he's the worst, but he probably is overdue for a main character set. But I, yeah. I think that yeah, if a character does something in a movie and they, they are liked, then yeah, yeah they'll probably get some hero clicks made. I think that's a fair assumption. Pope Possum the Fourth asks, with our first prime legacy card. What are your wish list primes to get one? And he says Black Lantern Zoom and Lantern Legacy seems possible now. That's pretty sick, actually. Scourge is up there. Scourge is one of my favorite primes of all time. I would love to see him get a little more um, more gunning in there. His prime is already like kind of perfect, kind of already love what it does, but I would just love to see him back on the board again. So I'd be down for that as a prime. Caped Crusader. Caped Crusader. Okay, there you go. Oh, my gosh. Anarchy. I know we just oh, did like geez. a top ten yeah, we did prime just do list. Top primes. Those are the two that jumped out at is me. He, I guess Josiah is still a prime, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, he got to keep his prime rarity. So yeah, if they keep prime rarity, I'm okay. Dude, wrecker prime. He was already perfect though. Oh, yeah. but he's so sick. Jakeem you know? Thunder would be an interesting one. I mean, as far as like iconic primes of all time, Jakeem Thunder is up there. Technically, Vulture is up there, but I do not want to ever no, see blast that. No, him, blast him into space. Yeah, I hate and that, And forget dude. about him. Let him fly Vulture. around up there. So, Let him die so around much. up there. Just kind of <laughs> floating uh, around. Just, oh, I mean, U.S. agent. That oh, rock. yeah. Oh, Shout out to gosh, that, dude. Oh, my gosh, dude. 100%. Yeah. Again, perfect figure. But bring really, him back. Really, again, perfect. But bring him back. Bring him back in an era where Thanos doesn't exist. and No kidding, yeah. Mad Jim and Destroyer are your two options. How about Destroyer? You want to How see him again? Destroyer? Uh, no. No? Sure? No. Absolutely not. Why not? I can live. 
Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> no particular you didn't reason. Like him? Nah, I just didn't like him. What can oh. I say? I just didn't like the guy. Well, that's fair. Just kind of didn't like. Just didn't. I like know the they're player. not primes, but the uh, the space knights from Avengers Infinity. They were like that first kind of pseudo prime, non prime. Yeah. They were cool. I would like to see those guys back. Old a little Firefall. more synergy would be sweet. Firefall is sick. I think that'd be a fun Man, legacy. Set. Bring Craven Prime back. Oh, Alyosha. Work. Oh yeah. Oh duh, Alyosha. Oh my Alyosha gosh. Alyosha Craven. Yeah, Holy, duh. that's my actually number one. I played no, that, that figure is so into good. a grave. <laughs> Which Craven? No, you're actually. Yeah, he did that too. <laughs> Craven. He played himself into a grave. He does play himself constantly. But yeah, there's a lot of really cool primes you could bring back, especially if you keep their prime rarity. I'm definitely cool with it. Yeah, make them crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go nuts. Tyler M. asks, is Bucky's arm the best Bucky in the game? Unequivocally, yes. Yes. Yep, the answer is ever. yes. Ever. Best Bucky ever. Alex then asks, also, is Bucky's arm the best arm in the game? And I think I have to double check what the Hulkbuster arms do. Ooh. If we can actually we say that. What was one, like, Force Blast or something? I still, I don't think that beats Bucky. Bucky's arm. Oh, geez. Typing an arm gets, like, armor and stuff. I just type in Hulkbuster. I know what I'm doing. I said I know what I'm doing. No space. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. So, Hulkbuster right arm. What does this do? Energy explosion, minimum range value of six. That's, like, fine. Ooh. Points. Another competitor. Exploit weakness. It's pretty good. Waldo arms. Ooh. Waldo arms are very good. I still think looking at these arms, left and right arm for Hulkbuster, I think Bucky's arm is better than that. I think Bucky's arm is think still Waldo better arm, than Waldo arms. I think it, yeah, I think it beats Waldo it's arms. It's more consistent. As well. Oh, oh it is Ock not. arms. No, yeah, Ock uh, arms. Ock wins. arms. Yep. Ock arms is flurry. I mean, flurry, giant reach too with improved movement. It was like elevated, elevated hindering. And hindering. And all stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't see how it's Ock beaten out the win. Ock arms. You can't beat the Ock arms. We'll, we'll Sorry, look a Bucky's little bit arm. more, but the Ock arms are. Even the OG Octopus arms. Michael Jordan arms right there. triple perplex, right? Oh, yeah. But you had to, like, roll to pick those up. That is true. Those were a relic. Those were... Those were goofy. What other arm is there? I don't... I don't know if we have any other arms in the game. There's the... The bystander... Who's that guy from the Deadpool set? Oh, Doctor... No, he made hands. Oh, he made hands. Weapon X made hands. Those are robot Mm. hands. Doctor Pandemonium? Is that his name? Does he, he make makes arms? arms. <laughs> We're doing our research live. Master right. Pandemonium. Mm, okay, okay, but okay. is he? Is he, am I right? Does but how are his arms? arms? But he makes arms? demonic arms. Okay, let me look up demonic arm really quick. Let me see what his demonic arms do. Enhance. He's 129 points though. That's really tough. Demonic. <laughs> demonic. What's the demonic arm do? Oh, it's a 10 phasing, 11 poison, 15 nothing, Blech. one damage exploit. Okay, Mm-mm. the demonic arm does not take it here. No chance. No chance. See ya. Yeah, it's got to be okay. We have a feat card called Call to Arms. Okay. Oh. So we have a we have somebody ringing in. Hello, call. Hello, hello. Collect call from Two Arms. Two Arms. This is Mister Two Arms speaking. This is prerequisite masterminder support. Choose a character. Give the character a power action. Make an attack roll as though making a close combat attack against an adjacent target friendly character that has one or more action tokens and that is not adjacent to an opposing character. Okay, a little specific. Ignore all the modifiers for the purpose of the attack. If the attack succeeds, remove all action tokens from the target and deal the target one avoidable damage. That is not better. No. But we had to check no, call to not. arms. We're almost almost through I all think- of it. What is it? The Captain Armor America? piercing was insane, but that is not an arm. I don't know if that. I don't know if that should count. No, it definitely doesn't. Armor that piercing was yeah. Insane. Oh, it's insanely good. So yeah, I'm gonna go Ock arms at one, locking it in. Okay. Bucky's arm these at two. Hands, technically, so these don't count. Okay, and Waldo's up, arm at three. So the Captain America Sentinel like splits off into pieces, but those are foot and hands, so mm. not arms. So never mind. I would agree. I would say octopus arms number one. Mm-hmm. What was your second? Bucky's arm. Bucky's arm, and then call the arm is your third? No, no, no. Waldo no. arms. Waldo arms. Oh, yeah, yeah, Waldo arms. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, I think... I think that's about right. There's your Dial H arms tier list. We're happy to revisit it if you guys have feedback on that. I think you know. the Hulkbuster arms should be up there, though. Straight up granting exploit would be great for 10 points in the yeah. in the arms race. But also, <laughs> the crowbar is just a better 10 points that gives you exploit as well. So that is true. It gets beat out by different But the equipment. crowbar isn't an arm. It is not, no, it's not an arm. It is not an arm. Is exploit... I mean, the free attack from Waldo's arm 
or the stat mod. But man, sometimes it's free in cap and it burns you so bad mm-hmm. when it's free in cap. It does, it does. And that's a third of that the time. That does hurt, yeah. A static exploit is very nice. But most of the time you have other ways to get around reducers. Like handing out exploit has just it's weird, but I don't feel like it's ever been particularly impactful. Mm. I can't think of a time where it was because it's just always been there's always a way for you to strip impervious or you already like have exploit or psychic blast. Like, I'm not going to say it's bad, sure. but it's never been incredible. Waldo Arms, I think, definitely got yeah. more play than I think any of those things in the in the Hulk limbs era or sorry Hulk Buster limb era. Uh, I believe it was mainly the, the torso. The, yeah. I mean, the torso gave you invulnerability. Invuln's crazy. Straight up, invuln for ten points is gnarly. So the hand, the arm so beats up its own torso. Yeah. There you go. Our last question is from Mister Bozo Mancer. Would you rather own Bucky's arm like a shelf piece, or replace your arm with Bucky's arm? Does it also come uh, with the Hydra ties? Oh geez, like you mean like all the mastermind brainwashing? Yeah, like and somebody stuff? says like train station oh, zombie or whatever. Rabbit, yeah, and rusting just... the nine homecoming sixteen, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean you just are brainwashed. And then I'm leaving my job and like fighting for Hydra or something. That would be awful. No, I call I in the next it's... day. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I would assume it's you just re- lose your real life left arm and it's just replaced with Bucky's arm. I don't think I would want to do that. Though. No, I, don't really... I feel like this is a really bad like. Would you rather question? It's a really bad would you rather. I think I'd rather just, yeah, own Bucky's arm and I can just put it on a shelf or something. Mm-hmm. That's, like, funny. That's cool, you know. Having I don't need, Bucky's arm. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, I, Evil Dead's cool and all, but I don't want to replace my hand with a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That seems so practical, though. It's so incredibly Cutting practical. your own hair. Kidding? Oh, man, it's easy. Done. Mowing the lawn. Cutting down a tree. All those hedges that yeah. we have. Oh, back hedges, there yeah. Not trim. mowing the lawn. Yeah, yeah. Be... Mowing the lawn would be miserable. Just like rolling off. around with your arm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're scooching around the ground. Yeah, no. Somebody, nobody's going to threaten you. Oh, no. I would like to see them try. Yeah. It'd be really funny to walk down the street with one hand in your pocket and then and your the other arm's like way up and the chainsaw <laughs> is, is in, in the pocket. your pocket. Just the start of the blade is in there. Wow, that guy's so nonchalant, cool, and mysterious with that <laughs> chainsaw in his pocket. Jeez. So I don't know, well, Tristan. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree. I they don't want Bucky's arm. Yeah. Do you want Bucky's arm? Tristan? No, I don't. No, does Tristan? Yeah. Maybe he does. I bet, I I feel like he kind of does. Yeah. I feel like he does want Bucky's arm. Lots of Bucky's but arm questions. It's all been, you know what? It's it spawned from the first question. You know what? It just it ran from there. So shout out to to Tyler M for, <laughs> for <laughs> spawning a hilarious amount of just Bucky's arm and arm related questions as a whole. But guys, that is Dial H for Hero Clicks. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to again get in on this discussion, this fun Bucky's arm discussion, feel free to join our Patreon and join our Discord. If you want to be like Michael Nelson, just send us some really cool team builds, or if we throw the gauntlet at you, I guess, and send us some team builds, or just ask mm. us questions through our email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. And if you want to send us questions through our Facebook, you can get a Dial H for Hero Clicks podcast over on Facebook. Remember, for all your YouTube content, unboxings, videos, podcasts, and more, make sure you dial H. And like always... Happy trails. Meow. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. There's a cap. Left. There's a cap. A Captain America. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your left. There's a shield. Left. There's a shield. And it's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your when left. When he's on your left, he's on your left.